Hey, what up? Welcome back to Baseline to Go Line. I am Alan Cole, Andy Colburn, and I am flying dolo today. Sorry about that. My co-host Mark Harris has some personal stuff that's going on, so um, he will be back in the next coming videos. But I am flying dolo. You just got to deal with this ugly mug for today. Um, I want to leave the NFL stuff uh, due to the fact that I want Mark's input on some of the stuff that I want to share when it comes to the NFL with the playoffs with, you know, the, the Cowboys losing and with the Bengals uh, winning their first playoff game in 31 years, with Bill Belichick losing. Um, and where that, where the, what does that mean for him? Uh, was he dependent on Tom Brady? But I want to leave that stuff so when me and Mark come back together, we both can uh, give you our insights on how we feel about that. But we still going to get to some sports. Um, I do want to shout out a couple people. Want to shout out the real one. He, they actually commented to let us know what it was that they're sipping on. And the real one was sipping on some berry lemonade. And then also shout out to Deidre. She was sipping on some water, but she's doing a fast. So we're going to give them a pass, her a pass for sipping on water. When we ask you guys what you're sipping on, like right now, um, I got me some wine called Jam Jar. It, it's a Shiraz, a oh, semi-sweet Shiraz. Comment down below, let us know what it is that you're sipping on because, you know, once again, this is more than just a sports show, it's a vibe. So, once again, it's a Shiraz to life, health, wealth, and sports talk. Salute. But what I was saying, though, is you don't necessarily have to sip on liquor. Um, if you want to slip on liquor, that's fine. I don't want to be the only drunkie here. <laughs> but if you want to slip on liquor, that is fine. If you have juice, water, whatever it is that you're sipping on, just comment down below. Let us know what it is that you're sipping on. I want the interaction with the show. Also, myself and Mark both, I'm going to speak on his behalf. We both really appreciate all of the, you know, the phone calls, the text messages, and even when you see me out, the comments that you have about the show. But I also want those comments down below. And the reason is because it, it causes interaction within the people who are watching. You may have a take on something that somebody else that is a fan of the show or a fan of the sports topic in which we're speaking about, they may have a different take on it. So you guys can have some back and forth about it as well. So this isn't just for myself and, and for Mark. I want this to be an all-inclusive show. And then once again, comment down below and let us know what it is, the sports topics and stuff that you that you want to want us to talk about. We'll be able to bring you on the show to, to discuss those sports topics. So this is going to be, I want this to be really interactive and I want everybody here to enjoy it and to have fun because once again, we can't do this. Well, we can do it without you, but we don't want to do this without you. We want you guys to be on this same, on this journey with us to grow this channel. So make sure you comment down below. Let us know what it is that you're sipping on. All right. Um, I gave the shout out to Deidre for water. I gave the shout out to uh, the real one for drinking berry lemonade. I do want to get into something that's not basketball related. I want to get into something. I want to know if you guys saw this trailer. So there's a new show that's about to come on uh, pretty soon. And it's a reboot of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but it's called Bel-Air. But it's more of a drama. And I want to share this trailer with you because I want you guys to look at this. And then I'm going to react to it after I look at this. This time we're trying to make you forget who you are and where you came from. Don't let it do that. Damn! Jeffrey Thompson, house manager. Will! Oh, Bill! Ten years is a long time. Let me show you around. Where them dimes at? Hillary! Will! Let's go find you something fit for a prince. What do you think? I made you look. Yo, Uncle Phil. I'm glad you're safe. We'll talk later. Cause I'm real. Yo, is this really baby Ashley? You're a long way from home, Mom. Oh, too. How you been? Yeah. You know, thriving. I hope uh, one day we can talk about why you're really here. Do you know why I'm here from Philly? Scrapping the bull cool. 
Go nasty. Don't do that! Was it you? Now some bad man from Philly, he wanted to deal with you. Why move mountains to give you here? So here's the story. Came to Bel Air for a better education. Simple. Be patient. Give this a real chance. We have a different set of rules here, okay? If you want to do well, just keep your head down and follow my lead. Oh, whoa, whoa. Man, you know I'm a rep West Philly wherever I go. Yo, King, what's up, man? No love. Look around. These are my people. This is going to be so ill, no one? bro. Steer clear. Welcome to Bel Air. What the hell is my life? Yo, chill out, bro. Maybe Will just doesn't cut out for this. Why are we working so hard to save a boy who doesn't want to be saved? Because we owe it to him. A real man takes responsibility for his actions. A real man knows when to let go of his pride and make the most out of a second chance. Be the Will who charmed West Philly with his talent and swag. Let the music diffuse all attention. Still think I'm in the background too, let's go. Yo, it's a lot to unpack there, but I just want to just just touch on it just a little bit, right? The reason why I think that shit is so dope is because, especially given the social climate that we're in right now, think about it. Back when The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air came out, which was one of my favorite shows to watch as a kid, it was on NBC, and there was certain shit that they couldn't show because it was on NBC. With this being on Peacock, Peacock gives is almost like it gives you more freedom to say certain things and do certain things like they really couldn't show back there on nbc why why will really left philly if you saw it in the trailer he had a gun he shot in the air with the gun they couldn't pull that shit off on nbc back in the day but now given the social climate that we in i think this is going to be dope because it shows you that when will really got out to to, to west i mean to uh to bel-air he wasn't accepted right away as they portrayed him to be in the in the um in the sick or in the sitcom. Remember when he got to Bel Air Prep and how everybody was praising him because he was the cool uh cousin from West Philly? You see, this is a different it's a different take. Like he wasn't really accepted right away. And I think this is gonna be super dope due to the fact that it's gonna give us a different perspective on what it is like coming from a poverty area to these higher end places and what black people have to go through on a consistent basis. I think that is so dope. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. Y'all comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about that, okay? Um, let's get to the sports. So what I want to get to is my top 10 list of the 20, or the my top 10 NBA players under the age of 25. Wait, before I get into that, let me just say this really quick. I want to give a speedy recovery to Kevin Durant. I think right now Kevin Durant is the best player in the league. And I don't like to see, even though I'm a LeBron fan, I'm going to just state that too for the record, I'm a LeBron head, but Kevin Durant's the best player in the league. And I don't, want to, I don't like seeing the ambassadors of the league out with injuries and things like that, especially with him averaging 29.7 points a game, leading the league in scoring. I think right now Brooklyn is in second. As we record the show, I think Brooklyn is in second in the East right now behind Chicago. And I don't like playoff positions. And I know injuries are a part of the game. It happens. Shit happens on a consistent basis. But I just want to wish him a speedy recovery. Reason is, is he's dealt with the MCL sprain. And with all the adversity that he had to go through before when it came to his Achilles injury and the offseason shit that he had to go through with Kyrie, him, um, James Harden being out a little bit earlier this season, battling injuries and stuff. I just want to wish KD a speedy recovery. I sometimes think KD gets a bad rap for um, going to Golden State and not and quote unquote not producing um, in in Oklahoma City with Westbrook because he was on his own. Um, but if you go down the lineage of basketball and through the history of basketball, nobody's ever won a championship by themselves. So. 
I just think he gets a bad rap. Once again, I think he's the best player in the world, even though I am a LeBron fan, first and foremost. But I think Kevin Durant's the best player in the world. So I just want to give him a speedy recovery and hope he gets back uh, to the to his MVP level that he was playing it with or playing at, I should say. But what I want to do is go over my top 10 NBA players under the age of 25. And I want to share this with you because this is very interesting to me. But I want to share this, my list with you. And I'm going to explain my list as I'm sharing it, right? So sharing the wrong screen. Sorry about that. Watching the Joe Button podcast. But let me share my screen. And I want to share this with you, right? So, oh, sorry about that. Let me get back. Let me get back. Let me get back. Okay, we're here. Sorry about that. So, at number one, I got Ja Morant. Now, right now, Ja Morant is Candyman. Say his name. You got to come see him. He is him. He's that dude right now. I think he is the most electrifying player in the league right now. And I'm going to go over my list. I know y'all reading it right now, probably criticizing me and shit. Comment down below. Let me know who your top 10 under 25 is too. But John Morant is number one for me right now. I think John Morant is box office, most electrifying young player in the league. And I think he is a top five MVP candidate right now. Um, I thought John Morant would be good. And if you go back to my previous videos, I stated that I would have I would have personally taken him first over Zion. I understand why the Pelicans didn't take him over Zion, but I would have taken him over Zion, number one. I knew John Morant was going to be good, but I didn't think he was going to be this good this quick. So at number one, I got John Morant. Number two, I got Jason Tatum. I think Jason Tatum gets overlooked because of... I don't want to necessarily say he doesn't fit well with Jalen Brown, but there's just something off in Boston. And I, I kind of want him to get out of Boston, and I want him to get to a different team so he can uh, really show us what he is made of, especially on the playoff stage and at a bigger level. Um, I, I do think that um, – well, I shouldn't say on a bigger level because he's been to the playoffs before, but I kind of want him to get out of Boston. I don't know what it is um, – about Boston and uh, superstars outside of Larry Bird and when he was there. But it just doesn't seem like it's a good fit for superstars for some reason. So I kind of want him to get out of Boston, okay? Number three, I got Luka Doncic. Now, last year, keep in mind, this is my list as of today, January 17th. Um, before, last year I would have had Luka Doncic number one. But Luka Doncic... Um, I don't think he took this offseason serious enough for me. He came in out of shape. Um, and for me, his 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 whininess and his finger pointing kind of docks him a couple of notches, right? So I don't – not to say that he's not a great player because I still think he's a great player. And last year, if I would have made the same list, I would have had him number one last year. But now I just think he, it docks him a little bit because he came in out of shape. He's a he's finger pointing and he's always whining at referees and things like that. And um, I, I just think it brings him down a couple notches. Once he's still that dude, he is still him. And I think he's an ice cold killer. So I do got Luka Doncic number three, number four Trey Trey Young, number five Lamelo Ball. I think LaMelo Ball is genius with his playmaking ability and his his floor generalship. I think he's just amazing with that. And I, and I think he's better than his brother, Lonzo. And number six, I got DeAndre Ayton. I think DeAndre Ayton gets overlooked because he's in Phoenix and he's playing there with Chris Paul and with Devin Booker. Devin Booker is that man. Chris Paul is, we know he's a point guy. And so I just think as a third wheel, DeAndre Ayton gets overlooked. Um, but I think DeAndre Ayton, for what he provides for that team, he is probably, I would say DeAndre Ayton is probably, I don't want to say the most important piece because that's Chris Paul, 
but he is a very, very integral piece into what they do. All right. Anthony Edwards, number seven. Now, Anthony Edwards is going to be on a rise. I think Anthony Edwards, we, we, we oftentimes overlook what he does because he's in Minnesota and he's playing with Carl Anthony Towns and Carl Anthony Towns gets the spotlight in Minnesota. But if you ever want to see somebody who is box office as well, Anthony Edwards is him. Shea Gilders Alexander is at eight, I think, because of his situation in Oklahoma City, him being there, the team sucking, um, and, you know, them kind of quote-unquote tanking to a lesser degree. We don't see too much of Shea, but I have the league pass. I watch Shea on a consistent basis. I kind of wonder if the Clippers regret giving up Shea, but I think when you're getting Paul George, you got to give up the house for Paul George. Um, but this dude, Shea, He's going to be a problem. I got Bam at, at uh, 9, and I got Zion at 10. Now, Zion, the reason why he is he's at 10, the reason why he still made my top 10 list is because when Zion is playing, he's going to give you 25, and he's going to give you 9 or 10 boards a game. And he's going to shoot 60% from the field. I think Zion, his biggest problem, as y'all know, if you saw my previous video, I said this before, his biggest problem is just he can't stay healthy. But I believe that he is a top 10 player. Um, even still right now, you can't knock him for not – I mean, you can knock him for not playing because I knocked Jamal Murray for not playing because if Jamal Murray was playing, Jamal Murray would be on this list. But I just still think Zion, his upside is so high that he has to make my top 10 list. Um, honorable mention, I had Brandon Ingram, Darius Garland, John Collins, De'Aaron Fox, and Lonzo Ball. And there's a lot of other players out there that I missed. But that is my top 10 list. Comment down below. Let me know what, it, what your top 10 list of the NBA players under 25 is. Um, hopefully, Mark and I are going to be back next week with another um, episode. I will be uploading throughout the week. I got some stuff in the works with a couple of former NBA players and former pro basketball players. I got some stuff in the work. I'm trying to get something in the works with, with a couple of former NFL players as well to come talk about some stuff. And then what I want to do also, if y'all know someone out there, comment down below. Let me know if it's you. Let me know that it's you. But I, what I want to do next year, and I know we're a little ways off, but I just, just want to plug the listeners with this. I want to get somebody to come on the show on a consistent basis, start a next football season, who is a fantasy expert and i put air quotes around expert but someone who really knows fantasy football because what i want to do is each week bring you on and let the, let the fans know who they should be sitting starting who should they be grabbing off the waiver wire things like that all right so comment down below let me know um once again we appreciate everybody out there for subscribing to the channel for liking the videos for commenting on the videos i do want to emphasize one more time i really appreciate it mark mark as well all the comments through text messages, when you see us out in public, when you comment on the show, all of that, we definitely appreciate it. But I want this conversation to get down in the comments because I want everyone to be intertwined and engaged in this conversation that we have surrounding sports. All right. So once again, Al Boogie. Nope, not no more. Alan Colby's Colburn, <laughs> the host of Baseline to Goal Line, the illest sports podcast show on the land. Peace and love.